Hi, I'm Bridget Esslinger with the Health and Wellness Boot Camp, and we're here today with another episode of the Health Warrior Series, and it's all about gluten. You'll want to stick around and join me, so come back. Thanks for joining me again for another episode of the Health Warrior series. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about gluten, all about gluten, gluten free, what's all the rave, and why should we care? And those particularly with autoimmune diseases or autoimmune conditions, gluten is something you really want to take to heart. It can really be devastating to your overall health. And I'm speaking from past experience myself and how gluten really um, impacted my overall health. And when I removed it, I saw a great great difference. So let's dive in and let's talk about gluten. And what is gluten? Most people think that gluten is just uh, a grain. Maybe perhaps they know that it's a protein, but it is a group of proteins that exist in all kinds of grain. So let's talk about that a little bit more in detail. Um, when we talk about gluten-free and when something is labeled gluten-free, the Food and Drug Administration only looks at gladolin. And if that is, and that's one protein of gluten, Gluten. It's in the protein and the gluten family. And if it is not in that product, and typically it's wheat, and if it's not in that product, it can be labeled gluten free. So that's pretty deceiving. If we look at the table here at the top of this slide, look at the grains. So we have wheat, and most people think corn is a vegetable. It's definitely not a vegetable, it is a grain. Um, sorghum, barley, rye, millet, oats. You see the, the total percent of protein, which is a gluten protein that's found in each and every one of those grains. That's, that is very important information. So when we talk about a gluten-free um, diet, if you're still eating grains, you're not gluten-free. There is no such thing as a gluten-free grain. There is gluten, that protein does exist in all grains. So it just depends on that percentage and how sensitive your body is to it. Now, gladolin is the one that has been the you know most extensively studied, and like I said, the FDA recognizes that, and if it is not not in the food, then it is not, uh, then it can be labeled gluten free. So the, um, each grain has one or more types of this gluten protein found in it. So it could very well have um, uh, gliadin in it and, and many of those other ones listed there. But you have to be careful, make sure you read your ingredient listings and see if something is labeled gluten free, could it by chance have some of those other grains in it because it's truly not gluten free if your body can't tolerate that. Very important. So that's the backstory. Let's move on. Gluten is like the glue that holds us, that holds everything together. And that's the meaning of it, the Latin term. It's the protein that helps bind ingredients and create a denser product. What might come to mind when you think about that? So all of our baked goods, breads, pastas, crackers, cookies, candies, <laughs> um, it's in a whole host of things. So you really wanna be, again, careful, read your ingredient listings and make sure that gluten is not in that product if you're looking to be grain free. That's the term I wanna start using now is grain free, not gluten free. Let's talk about some myths about gluten. You can eat all the gluten you want and you, if you're symptom free. If you don't have any symptoms, knock yourself out, go ahead and eat whatever you want. Not the truth. <laughs> Chances are, down the road, you're gonna start to experience some health problems, and you may not even know that they're creeping up on you. Here's a prime example. Maybe when you eat a certain food, you sneeze a lot, you cough a lot, <clears throat> you find yourself <clears throat> having to clear your throat a lot. Maybe the excess phlegm is building up in your throat. Those are all key indicators. Again, our bodies are talking to us. We've talked about this in previous episodes. Our body sends us signals. So when something like that starts to happen, ask yourself, huh, what did I eat? 
Maybe you just ate it. Maybe it's a food staple in your everyday diet. Maybe you eat cereal, bagels, toast, something like that for breakfast every day. And over time, you start to see those symptoms come on. So keeping a food journal or a food log is very important if you're looking to find out symptoms. Maybe perhaps you tried some type of a diet, and I wanna be careful with the word diet. Let's say you changed your eating habits for a while, and you tried something different, and you removed something and you saw, or maybe you didn't realize you seen a change in your body, and then you reintroduced food and you started to have some of these symptoms. That is why a food journal or a food log is so important. Keeping track of that so you can reflect back, look at what you ate and say, wow, maybe that was a trigger and you didn't realize it. So just a, a point there to keep in mind. Here's another myth. Gluten sensitivity and celiac disease are the same thing. Not true. <laughs> celiac disease really, really impacts people and it can be very devastating to them. Food sensitivity or gluten sensitivity is back to that sensitivity I just talked about. Maybe it happens the day you eat it, maybe it's sometime after, three, four weeks later, when your body builds up to it or you have a sensitivity to it. To hope that makes sense. What about another myth here? Eating a gluten-free diet is unnecessary if you aren't gluten sensitive. Not true. <laughs> There's no scientific evidence that we need to eat grain. If we go back to the hunter-gatherer days, go way back to our ancestors, did they thrive and have to have grains in their diets? No. They were hardworking individuals. They lived off the land, nuts, berries, you know, um, vegetables that they grew in the ground. They didn't have grain, right? Grain's not that old. Grain hasn't been around that long. They did not have pastas and breads and candies and cookies. So, no, we do not need grains in our diet to survive. So that is a huge, huge, huge myth. And over time, again, that leads to a whole host of health conditions. We just don't realize it. Gluten, again, a family of proteins found in all grains is very detrimental to our overall health. And it may not be immediate, but it will happen over time. Trust me, our bodies have a hard time digesting these grains. Gluten-free processed foods are safe. So as I just talked about a little bit ago, when, when something is labeled gluten-free, uh, use a word of caution here. Remember, gluten-free only means that gliadin is not in that food, meaning wheat, barley, or rye, that's what the FDA recognizes, and it can be labeled gluten-free if it's not in there. That does not mean that it is grain-free. So again, read your labels, make sure you know what you're eating, especially if you have a sensitivity or obviously if you have celiac disease. You do not want to encounter any kind of a gluten from any kind of a grain. So again, why should we care? Um, I kind of talked about this a little bit. Gluten sensitivity leads to a hyperimmune response. So when we eat gluten, our body has a response. So like I said, our bodies struggle to digest gluten and it is hard on our systems. And in previous episodes, we talk about inflammatory responses and what that means. So when a foreign invader enters our body and our body is trying to digest that, it sends out help. Remember our armed forces in our bodies? We talked about that in previous episodes as well. That infl inflammatory response is trying to help our bodies break down that food and get it out of our systems. So if we constantly invade our bodies with these foreign invaders and our immune system is responding trying to remove it and break it down and excrete it from our body, that is gonna cause an inflammatory response and maybe it won't do a good job of it. Maybe eventually you start to have achy joints and again, a whole host of health problems that are um, hard to diagnose or unexplainable, skin issues, you know, hair, nails, skin issues, joint issues, all those things fall into an autoimmune response. Again, your body's talking to you. Um, it, can, it can wreak havoc on your hormone levels as well. Something else to look at is pain is never normal. So when we have pain, we brush it off. Again, I'm just getting older. Um, maybe you think it's because you sat all day. 
that could be a contributor, but it's not something that is normal. So when you have pain, really start to dive deep and ask yourself what might be causing that and could it be eliminated? And chances are, if you address it early on enough, the answer is yes. People um, with gluten sensitivities respond well when the grains are removed from their diet. I'm a prime example of that. When I went on my elimination diet and I eliminated all grains from my diet, I saw a big difference. Um, it was, it's amazing. If I eat gluten, I feel it, trust me. I end up with achy joints, it's hard to move. Um, the analogy that I use is I feel like I'm walking in molasses in quicksand at the same time. That's how it feels. It is detrimental to my body my body really struggles with it. I'm also highly allergic to beef and eggs, you know? So again, if you, if you have symptoms, get to the root cause. Don't mask the symptom with some drug or something else that you're taking over the counter and everyone responds differently. I mentioned this earlier. When you have a sensitivity, it could happen within an hour of you eating the food, or perhaps it could happen weeks later and you don't even realize it. But again, if you're eating that same thing over and over and over, you know, it's gonna build up and maybe you're having the symptoms and you don't realize it. You're not making that correlation. So again, a food journal is extra important when you're trying to look for the root cause of a problem you might ha be having in your body. So gluten-free food choices. Uh, focus, again, majority of the diet on a whole nutrient-dense, naturally gluten-free foods. We talked about this, fruits and vegetables, plant-based proteins, beans, nuts and seeds, you know, your lean meats, dairy, if you can tolerate dairy, but again, there's a whole, a whole other episode on um, dairy and the casein, again, another protein that our body struggles to digest, and gluten-free grains. Is there anything that's out there that's a gluten-free grain? Again, I think we've talked about that, and it's really hard to find out what that is. There are some that have minimal of that protein, the gluten protein in the grain that would um, bother you, so find out what that is. And as I mentioned, always read your labels. Um, we talked about the gluten-free labeling rules voluntarily. Uh, it's voluntary for the food industry, and it doesn't apply to all food that you might encounter in the supermarket. And the ingredients change all the time without warning. So something may be stamped gluten-free. I'm gonna use popcorn as an example. <laughs> it's labeled gluten-free, but corn, which is derived, it's how popcorn is derived, it's a grain, and maybe you don't tolerate it well. So again, it's you, it's your body, you have to listen to your body and find out what works for you. And back to that table that we looked at, what percentage of protein is in those grains could be key. And again, those weren't all the grains in the world. You need to really do your research and read your labels. And use caution when you're buying um, packaged foods, obviously, because what's gluten? It's the glue that holds everything together. And it is in so many products and so many preservatives, it would blow your your mind. So again, do your research and really dive deep into those ingredients. What are some uh, gluten-free resources? Here's a list that I thought might be handy. Um, you can check these websites out yourself. And also, another good point is if you're really, really interested in finding out are you gluten sensitive and do you have an issue with some of the foods you might be eating, there's a whole host of things out there you can do. One of the first things I recommend that you do is work with your primary care physician or your doctor and ask them to run a food sensitivity test. It's the IgG test or IgE test. And, and it will show that. It's a blood test that they do. They'll run it through a system and it will show if your antibodies are reacting to something in your environment, something that you're eating. It's a test your doctor can order. Just talk to them about that. Also, there's other great um, companies out there that to do food and allergy testing. Again, you'd have to pay for that out of your pocket. And another great resource is Viome. Viome.com looks at the gut intelligence of your microbiome, which is your gut, your belly, all those microbes in there that are trying to keep us healthy in our immune system. And it will tell you what foods that you should eat and what foods you should avoid. Um, it's it's a great great resource it's a it's a great investment in yourself it's a couple hundred dollars
dollars and gives you a whole host of information when you are looking for what should I be eating and what works for me because what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you we are two different people and no one person is a, or no two people are alike so again if you value your health and you're looking to make an investment to find out what works for you. I encourage you, do your research, and again, ask your physician if this blood test is right for you, and or look online and go to the foodandallergytesting.com. Look at Viome. Those are great resources for you to do on your own if you can and want to invest a couple hundred dollars. I encourage that. So that's what we have to say about gluten. Uh, hopefully this has been informative for you. Um, it certainly made a difference in my life. And if you're looking to make a change and you're struggling with something and you're, you're kind of questioning why is this happening, and maybe it's subtle. Maybe there's something that um, is just going on you can't quite put, quite put your finger on. Maybe you do eliminate all grains from your diet. Try that for 14 to 21 days. Do a food journal. You know, keep track of what you're eating and how you're feeling. More importantly, did something change? And then slowly reintroduce a food or a grain that you may have been eating before. If you were eating bread, for example, something like that and see if your symptoms change, if your body changes. That's one place to start. Again, our bodies do talk to us. They send us messages all the time. And those key signals like <clears throat> just that excess mucus in our throat, the coughing, the sneezing, the skin allergies, you know, those are subtle cues for us to pay attention to. And they're so critical if we do not address them early on. It can be detrimental to our overall health and cannot be reversed later on down the road if we let it go on too long. That inflammatory response needs to be squelched and gluten is hard on it. So that's my takeaway for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please, um, if you have messages, I, I would welcome you to look at my Facebook page. Um, hit me up on Instagram. I hope you like this video. Share it with your family and friends. Maybe they can benefit from it, and I'll see you on the next episode.